On this Halloween, welcome to r slash let's not meet, where a knife-wielding intruder breaks into OP's home. Our next Reddit post is from Loud and Proud. In 2014, I moved to England from Canada to gain work and travel experience and also to find myself. I ended up living in Essex with three other roommates. They were all women and a bit older than I was. I was 24 at the time. Megan was 31, Cherry was 34, and Cassie was 38. Megan was from New York, Cherry was from New Jersey, and Cassie was from Poland. All four of us shared a three-story flat. The back of our home was the living room and kitchen, and the back wall was complete glass that looked out into the garden, and the garden was completely fenced in. I adored all of my roommates, except for Cherry. After living with Cherry for seven months, I was over her antics. One day, I came home from work. I lock the door, make myself something to eat, and go up to bed. I brought some homework with me, so I'm in my nightie with all these papers around me and my headphones on, jamming out. I had headphones on because Cherry was out to dinner with work friends. That meant booze, and then soon after, a tantrum was surely to come. I just didn't want to have to listen to her crazy scream crying. I'm working away completely focused, until I feel something. I look up to see a man standing over me. I don't register it right away and passively say, Cherry's room is on the second floor and continue to work. Cherry regularly brought home strange men. The man doesn't leave. Again, I say, Cherry's room is downstairs. You, he then interrupts. I'm not here for Cherry. A cold chill iced my veins. My fight or flight kicked in just then. I start surveying the situation. I look him up and down. He has a bottle of Prosecco in one hand and a knife in the other. He's about 5'10 with muddy brown hair and black eyes. He has a light blue polo shirt on with one side of the collar popped up and he has a distinct Manchester accent. Once I focused in, I realized his eyes were black because his pupils were completely dilated. Uh oh, I was in trouble. I needed an escape plan. Unfortunately, this man was standing in between me and my bedroom door. I had to get downstairs, but I needed for him to think that it was his idea, so I decided to play along. Just then, he uses his knife to pop the cork, and wine starts flowing onto my carpet. I said, oh no, let's clean that up. I prefer to drink out of a proper glass anyways. He nodded, replying, yeah, you're a proper classy bird. Let's go. I try to act as natural as possible. I try not to show that I'm shaking all over and try to gain control over my breathing. We take the long journey down to the main floor of my apartment, all three floors. He has the back of my nightie bunched up in one hand and I could feel the point of the knife graze my back with his others. I was trying to playfully speak with him as he walked down the stairs. I couldn't tell you what I was saying. I was most likely rambling. I couldn't hear anything over my heart beating in my ears. We get to the bottom of the stairs and there's a hallway to my left that leads to the front door. On my right, which is much closer to us, is the kitchen and living room. We make our way to the kitchen. I point to the cabinet that had wine glasses. He said he knew where they were and started moving towards them. I now had the kitchen table between me and him, so it was time to run. I burst into a sprint down the hallway towards the door. My hands fumble over the locks, shaking and sweating. I swing open the door and see two men walking across the street. They must have been walking home from the train. There was a big train station in front of our house. I call out to them for help, and suddenly I'm flung onto the ground. Little pebbles piercing my skin sent sharp pains where they jabbed. The intruder pushed me out of the way to run and escape. One of the men chased after the intruder while the other said for me to go inside while he surveyed my home and to call the cops. I locked the doors and called the cops. While I'm on the phone with dispatch, I manically run around the house to double check all the windows and doors. Suddenly, I hear a loud bang on my door. I inform the dispatch of the banging, and dispatch informs me that the cops aren't there yet. I thought that it might be one of the guys who helped me, so I go to look out the peephole, and it's him. The intruder. He came back. He's banging on my door, screaming that I had his glasses and that he wasn't done with me. I absolutely freak out. The dispatcher attempts to calm me down, but I'm losing my ever-loving mind. 
She then said, They're pulling onto your street now. You should hear the sirens. And I did. Thank God. The intruder then takes off. One officer jumps out the passenger side while the car is still moving and chases after him. The second officer comes into my home. He interviews me and the two gentlemen, collects evidence, and takes photos. After some time of him being there, Cherry comes home and freaks out. Once the situation was explained to her, she said, Oh my god, that could have been me! Yeah, thanks Cherry, it's all about you. The next morning, I'm called in to identify a man they had in custody. I pointed him out. I go into a little room, and the officer pulls out an evidence bag. He asked me if the items were mine. They were. It was my underwear and photos that had been taken from my home. The officer told me that the intruder had been stalking me for some time now. He estimates three months. He also made a kind of nest outside of our home on top of a hill that overlooked into our living room and kitchen. He's a known sex offender and drug dealer. He told me how lucky I was to get out practically unharmed. Others weren't so lucky. To the man who stalked me and broke into my home, let's not meet again. However, I would love to run into those two gentlemen again. Every day, I'm thankful for them. Wow, OP, you're lucky that he was crazy off his rocker on drugs, because if he had been clear-headed, he probably wouldn't have fallen for that ruse. Our next Reddit post is from Upset Zucchini. I've had a stalker for about four years. He was never aggressive or sent me proper threats, so stubborn as I am, I did my best to ignore him and not give him the satisfaction of showing him any fear. And to be honest, after a while I also wasn't scared anymore since he almost never came close to me. His stalking behavior mostly just consisted of sending me letters and gifts, such as photos of my apartment building from the outside, things he dug out of my trash can, and so on. I called the police many times, but they weren't able to catch or identify him, or really tried to be honest. About three weeks ago, I discovered the German version of r slash ask me anything, and I thought that people might want to know what it's like to have a stalker. Since I barely use any social media aside from Reddit, and I have no personally identifying information here, I didn't think that he would ever see it. One person even asked, does he know that you're putting him on blast on Reddit? And I answered, maybe. Maybe it would make him angry. Maybe he'd be turned on. I don't know. I don't care. Well, I know the real answer now. He did see it, and he did not like it. Like I said, he was never aggressive and never came close to me. The closest I know of was when he sent me a picture of myself unlocking my apartment door, taken from the corner of the steps above. But I consider myself a pretty vigilant person, and I'm thinking that he might have hit a camera there instead of being there to take the photo himself. I think I would have noticed if he was actually there. I don't know how he got wind of the Ask Me Anything thread, but he did. The next week was quiet. No letters, and I didn't see him anywhere. Then, he left me letters with printed out questions and my answers from the thread. He also left a long, hateful letter towards my boyfriend about an issue that I had posted on the German version of r slash am I the butthole. His letters were never hateful like that before, though he never seemed happy with my boyfriend. He wrote about how I should share the spotlight with him since I got so much attention thanks to him. A few days later, I got a gift, but this time, he didn't leave it in my mailbox or at my car like he usually did. No, this time, he left it inside the apartment building right in front of my door. I didn't take it inside my apartment, but opened it outside. It was a pretty big box, which was also unusual, and it was taped shut. As I'm typing this out, I realize that wasn't a good idea at all, and it could have ended badly for me. But luckily, he didn't send me a bomb or anything. He did, however, send me several zip ties, a roll of tape, a TV remote with most buttons picked off, a pack of band-aids with a few used ones. Not actually used, just made to look that way according to the cops and a framed picture of me. I could tell the picture was taken a few days ago, and my boyfriend was next to me, but cut out of the photo. The frame was shattered, and the package was full of glass shards. There was clearly more glass than just would have fallen out of the frame, and they were also intentionally put inside the crumpled newspaper that was stuffed in there to keep it all in place. I called the cops right away and gave everything to them. They were more concerned this time, 
finally, and told me they would send patrol cars more frequently. He didn't show up or leave me any letters or gifts for another week and a half. But eight days ago, it started again. I found letters in my mailbox where he wrote about how he wasted his time on me, how I haven't been appreciating his efforts, and how he was wrong about me being special. Five days ago, I left my apartment in the morning, and I heard a crunch sound as I stepped on my doormat. He had put broken glass under it that night. I left to go to work because I was in a hurry, and I was just going to make my boyfriend call the cops, but then I found that my car had also been vandalized. The sides were scratched, the lights were smashed, and the windshield had a phrase painted on it. It's time soon, Miss O.P. He had written my last name. I went back inside and called the cops. They found the same phrase on a note under the doormat. This time, they really, really, really took me seriously. Which might have been because I was just pissed at this point, which I made very clear. If for some reason you're like me and just too stubborn to be afraid of a stalker like mine, then all of this, the letters, gifts, photos, even the damn glass under my doormat are just really annoying and inconvenient. But my car was useless to me now, and the threat scared even me. I did, however, have a dash cam in my car, and it caught everything. The police took the footage as evidence. They told me they would look into it further and promised to send more patrol cars again. Then, everything was quiet for two more days. Until two days ago. Someone rang the doorbell just after 4am. My boyfriend and I got up, but we were both hesitant, and I saw blue lights outside, and just as I got up, I heard them shouting, This is the cops! Please open the door! They told us they were called by one of our downstairs neighbors, who came home from his night shift about an hour earlier, and he heard someone else enter the building after them before they felt the door shut. My neighbors know about my situation, and I've asked them to make sure they never let strangers into the building. This neighbor then went to his own apartment and looked through the peephole. We have motion-activated lights in the stairway, so he waited to see if they turned back on. They did! Then, he saw a middle-aged man walk upstairs. Above this neighbor are only me and my boyfriend, and a single mom with three kids who probably won't be getting any visitors at 3am, so he called the cops. The cops came and found my stalker on the stair between my neighbor's floor and my floor. He should have been able to see the cop cars, since there's a little window there and they had their lights on, but he either missed them or he wanted to get caught. They found a pocket knife on him, and he confessed to being my stalker right away. He's finally caught! They got him! It took him four years, a provocative Reddit post, and one very vigilant and caring neighbor, but he's finally done! For now, at least. He's facing several charges, and I've collected every single piece of evidence over the past four years. I don't know what kind of outcome I can expect, but for now, I finally have some peace. Then, OP adds in an edit. Today, at 9.30pm, for the first time in over a year, I took out the trash by myself in the dark. My boyfriend always did it just to be safe, but today, I had nothing to worry about. Man, I don't understand why stalkers think the way they, they think. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I would have assumed that the stalker would know that he's harassing you, but he seems to think that it's supposed to be endearing? Like, you're supposed to be flattered, I guess? Like, oh, he sent me secret photographs of me and angry letters about my boyfriend. How sweet. I wish I knew who he was so we could make out. Like, is that what this guy thinks? Is that what stalkers actually think? Our next Reddit post is from Lila Jax. Last December, I was visiting my family down in Florida, and we spent some time in Treasure Island. My brother and I took my dog down to the beach at about 2 a.m. to play some fetch, drink, and have a good time. If you walk along the water, you can reach a few restaurants, bars, and hotels that line the beach. Out of nowhere, we see someone walking pretty quickly in our direction, and a few moments later, we can make out that they're being followed. My dog is arguably pretty well trained, and I've never once had her run off without permission, and never once has she not instantly returned when called. But that changed that night. My dog was about 5 feet from me, and I saw her hackle shoot up and I went to grab her collar. But my dog took off in a full sprint, making some truly terrifying barking and growling sounds. 
We obviously took off after her, and she reached the person who was being followed and put herself between them and the people behind them. She was barking, growling, and lunging at the people following the lone person, and I finally caught up to the dog and put her on a leash. She has never reacted that way, so it was scary. The group who was following the lone woman ended up being three men who were probably in their early 30s. They started booking it in the other direction. I turned around, and the person who was being followed was a young woman around my age. We asked if she was okay, and she just broke down in tears and collapsed into my brother. My dog insisted she get on the ground for some excited puppy kisses and a soaking wet cuddle, which they both seemed to enjoy. She was far too overwhelmed to talk, so she unlocked her phone and called her friend's number to have us talk to her. We were able to figure out where she was staying and walk her back to her hotel where her friend met up with her and we all exchanged numbers to talk to her at a later time. The next day we all got together where we learned that she had gone out for a walk on the beach, stopped for a drink at the bar, drank a bit, and then just wasn't feeling right. So she left the bar and soon after she noticed three men left after she did. She had been walking for a mile at that point, terrified, and was slowly getting more and more sick. She doesn't remember much about that night, and we knew that she was probably on something, but we had no clue at the time that she had been drugged. We're still friends now, and we're all going to meet up for spring break when we'll all be back in Florida. I've never been more proud of my dog and more grateful that we were in the right place at the right time. I hate thinking about what could have happened. To those three men, let's never meet. Beneath that, we have a similar story from Vulpes Vulpix. My friend's family has a condo near Reddington Beach on the Gulf of Mexico. Anyway, it was about 11pm, maybe midnight. Our little strip of beach is mostly condos and hotels, and half a mile down is where the restaurants and bars begin. Anyways, none of us were interested in drinking, so we just smoked on the beach. There were no lights outside. There were six of us, four guys and two girls. Out of nowhere, this drunk girl plops down next to us. She's giggling, but she's pulling on my friend's arm pretty hard and drags herself across his lap. We're all thinking, WTF? And that's when we see this group of four dudes. They're mumbling and run right past us. They sound super pissed. We all get quiet in case they're drunk and rowdy, but they blow by. As they pass, the girl whispers that she's been drugged, the guys were following her, and she lost her phone. She says that she's staying at a condo somewhere nearby, but she can't get up. This girl had managed to camouflage herself into our group while succumbing to whatever she'd been drugged with. Anyways, she stayed with us while we called the cops. By the time the cops showed up, she had passed out. No phone, we didn't know how old she was or her name. It was honestly pretty scary. No idea what happened to her after that. She's really lucky that you were there, OP. That was our slash let's not meet. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.